the official title of I'm excited for today, our first world champions here on the beach. And first up, the NACRA race, fast and furious, and then the mixed dinghy medal race. And that view there of the racing area gives us some idea as to what the conditions are like going out there. There is plenty of breeze, but surely there's another big factor in play here. The tide has just turned and it'll be pushing against the wind, making the seaway really difficult, particularly if you're going fast in a foiling boat. And these foiling boats are going to get out on the water and put on one hell of a display as we get set to get out there for the medal race in the NACRA 17. We think the fleet is getting quicker and quicker play it race by race and uh, go around the bush. Italians Ruggiero Tita and Caterina Banti started the regatta in dominant form. It's going to be interesting to see this huge fleet with 70 boats, what will be happen. The Tokyo gold medalist only dropped one point in the first nine races and well ahead of closest rivals Kohoff and Stumer, Gimson and Burnett and Jared and Johnson. Plenty more races to come. Keeping the regatta competitive are nine teams from eight nations who have managed great scores throughout the qualifying series. All our energies are here on NACRA. It was the last Olympic race for a sailing legend. It's a very special day for, for us and maybe for me, very, very special. In the gold fleet, the point spread is still tight, but the Italians dominate going into the medal race by 18 points. I started sailing at 20 years old uh, in a lake near Rome and then uh, I started in the Olympic campaign with the NACRA 17 when it was uh, an Olympic class. Uh, I started with the Optimist and then uh, the youth classes with the 29er, uh, then straight to the 49er and then to the, to the NACRA. Uh, but the moth has always been my game. My inspiration are for sure are people like uh, Santiago Lange, for sure is an, an inspiration for me also Alessandra Sensini, that is a really great uh, sport woman and people also are not from other sports. Uh, we prepared really well uh, during this last month, so yeah, we are really happy but still we have the medal race tomorrow. Well, that is what has brought us here to this point where the top three teams, well, some of them are confident, some of them still have work to do as we go into this medal race. Let's hear from those top three teams, starting off with the Italian pair of Tita and Banti. Mm, we are in the, in the first pos uh, position. 
Um, we won two world championships. Um, the second one was last year, but we will go in the world turn to sail in the better way as possible. This has kind of been the most important event of the whole year for us um, to make sure we were in the top 10 to qualify our nation. So, you know, we just had to battle on and do everything we could and I think we've been pretty lucky to be honest. We're trying to do the same for the middle race to set a clear plan and win the start and then try to win the race. <laughs> Shirley just talk us through the course that we're going to see for the middle race. The course is simple for the NACRA. It will be fast and furious. They start around the top mark, through the gate, back up and then a final dash for the finish line and the podium. Well, there is a big difference here into how people are lining up. Five of our NACRA 17s clearly thinking that they want to go off to the left-hand side. The rest wanting the right-hand side. In those final seconds now, as they start to wind the boats up, we've got Gimson and Burnett from Great Britain, the first to accelerate up at the pin. They've got to hold back a little bit more because they're close to the line. But it's very clear when the gun fires the direction that each of these boats is going to be taken. Only one of the team, Sweden, Jerud and Johnson, just tacking through. They have started badly here and they are in a battle for bronze. Up on the foils going upwind, Netherlands here, they are just going a little bit low. Uh, Leila Mir and uh, Brian Bauer just putting that bow a little bit down. Happy to run fast right now, happy to get the foils working, get the speed going. That's really their only option. They're the furthest boat to the left. Everybody else is stacked up to windward of them, so they have the risk now of having their tactics dictated to them by the rest of the fleet. One, two, three, four, five boats with Great Britons, Gimson and Burnett in the middle of the pack. Uh, just tacking over uh, Italy, uh, Becero and Frascari are coming through and they're coming back over now and they will be going behind their fellow compatriots coming through here and looking quite nice. The uh, number one pair who's been setting the pace, Ruggera Tita and Banti coming through. But I tell you what, coming out from the middle here, I mean, you can just see the uh, Swedish flag. Uh, Sweden here, uh, Jerud and Johnson, they are in the battle for bronze. They come into today wearing the bronze bib in third place. But there is just a few meagre points between them and the, the next three boats. They got a bad start and they're looking great in the middle. But ultimately, it's going to be the left hand side that has paid. These were the boats that uh, came off that line nicely heading to the left. Gimson and Burnett from Great Britain tacking over. They are going to be going underneath and we've got the uh, red bibs there of Jerud and Johnson from Sweden with that strong recovery after that poor start. And it's a very tight duck indeed. Winwood Mark for the first time in the medal race for the mixed multi-hull, the NACRA 17, and no surprise to see who is leading the fleet. It's the Italians, Ruggero Tita and Caterina Banti. The boat that is coming into this competition as current world champions is absolutely putting in the dominating performance. Just holding late on that hoister just a little bit, just seemed like they were just a little bit late to just come up. Now they've come in, now they're going to pulling up uh, with the power of the spinnaker. Now they've got to ride that power going down and we're going to be able to see the crews dancing forward and backwards on the hulls as they try and adjust that perfect foiling angle. And at the moment, in terms of the positions that we're seeing on the water, Mir and Bauer from the Netherlands will be moving up to that bronze position. And you can see them on the water at the moment, just behind. They're in second place right now. And if they can hold on to that, the bronze position, the third of the World Championship, that will be theirs. First time at the bottom of the course, and it is, of course, the Italians, Tita and Banti, still in the lead, effortlessly pulling out the metres ahead of their rivals. And here's the boat that is doing all the work in the medal race. This is the battle for the bronze for that third place position. And a very nice jibe, drop and turn from the Netherlands pair, Mir and Bauer, now safely onto that upwind course. Italy 71 flying into the bottom. Bizarro and Frascari screeching the boat round on that turn. But that bronze, that third, at the moment it is still with Mir and Bauer from the Netherlands. Jerud and Jonsson from Sweden have pulled it back a little bit. They're further out to that right hand side.
It looks to me the Italian sailing a little bit conservatively. We saw them absolutely send it and, and own that fleet on the first lap. And, and here, uh, it'd be nice to be able to take it easy, and that's exactly what they're doing. Isn't it incredible that sailing conservative for this boat still means flying around at the front of the pack? Tita and Banti coming in quite strong from the left-hand side. They're going to lose speed and they, with it lose distance on that tack for the starboard ley line. There's a big distance starting to open up now between the Swedish boat in third and the Netherland pair of Mir and Bauer as well. That's the real battle for bronze at the moment. Top of the course, final time, and of course, it's only going to be one boat, Tita and Banti from Italy. They are now completing that lap of honour. They have got to go down to the bottom of the course, and then that World Championship title will be theirs. Behind them, the boats have not been able to line up perfectly, and Germany having to duck the stern of Sweden. So Jorud and Johnson slipping around the top of the course and into second place. It's light. There's still a lot of tide. They miscalculated that ley line, which is, is a hard thing to call because they're quite far away and, well, so costly to have to do those two tacks. They are a few moments away from the jibe, the final jibe that should be taking them into the bottom of the course for the last time in this World Championships. All the hard work leading up to that moment where we will see them on the podium being crowned World Championships, that is behind them. They do not need to win this medal race, but why not? Why not stamp your authority onto a fleet before we go into Paris 2024? That finish line is waiting for them there. They seem to have judged that ley line really nicely. The rest of the fleet largely following suit behind them. Sweden coming through, Jorud and uh, Johnson as well coming down the world number 11 pair. For them, in terms of uh, third place, this is going to be their first big podium. It's going to be a real booster going into the next Olympic cycle. But they have got a mountain to climb to catch up with this boat, along with all of the fleet. The finish line there, the blue flag flying on the left and the right-hand side of the line. And now across the line, we've all been waiting for this moment. Nobody doubted it, but world champions for Tita and Banti from Italy. And now in that medal race, the Swedish number 11, world number 11 pair, Jorud and Jonsson, in third place on the world stage. Guys, you won 10 races and then finished it off winning the medal race. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are really happy. Beautiful sailing. You, you played that start so, so conservatively, Ruggero, and then, you know, you still came through uh, very well. So what's the secret? Uh, I think we had a very good speed for this championship all days and happy with that. Well, let's have a little bit of a look at the confirmed standings uh, now that we have got that medal race concluded. Of course, the Italians, Tita and Banti on top. In second place, Gimson and Burnett of Great Britain. But then the relief for the Swedish fans. Jerud and Johnson from Sweden sit on that final spot on the podium. It all came down to that medal race and they held their nerve. And, of course, the loudest round of applause. Ruggiero, Tita and Caterina Banti from Italy. But there was no doubt as to who it was that was going to be standing on this top spot. Champagne and sand. I'm sure that's going to make a very nice, sticky combination for these sailors. But everybody up there sharing that, that top spot, sharing that moment. All the hard work is behind them. And each of these teams has a reason to smile. What an achievement for the Italians, their third World Championship crown. Next up, we'll be on the medal race course of the Mixed Dinghy. Now let's see how the new configuration of the 470 class is going. This is the modified crew mix for this Olympic cycle, where the men and women compete together. The fleet is very competitive. Give it a red hot go and see how we go. The Japanese duo of Okado and Yoshioka have led the mixed dinghy fleet since race one. 
it's a competitive fleet with some teams still learning the mixed discipline. Uh, life good, no? Life, yeah. life pretty good. Life We're pretty happy. good. Test event winner and French favourites struggled in the choppier conditions. Not such a good day because of the early start. After three days of tricky variable racing, the trailing pack of Ferrari and Caruso, Andish and Markfort closed the gap to eight points as the two fleets joined together. It's a long way to go still. Once in Gold Fleet, the Japanese pair extended their lead and didn't look back. And they wrapped up the gold medal with the medal race to spare. Ichima! This is a very important regatta for us, but our first priority is to get that Olympic qualification. Getting the championship was another surprise. I started sailing when I was in high school and I've been sailing for 10 years. This will be my third Olympic campaign. I went to Rio and Tokyo. I started sailing at five years old, so it's been a long career. It's kind of funny. I have no particular inspiration. I'm just having fun sailing. And I'm really happy being first place going into the medal race. So the world title already going to Akada and Yoshioka from Japan. But look at the scrap for silver and bronze. Five teams are in contention here with the pressure on for Spanish duo Hernandez and Brugman. You know, first place is not achievable, so we are very tight in points with the people behind, so we're just going to make sure we have a good medal race. We couldn't deliver on what we uh, wanted but we actually stayed really calm and we tried to yeah, believe the process and especially with the last day we put us in this nice position and today we will go for it to defend a medal at the worst. Everything is short and sweet on the medal race course. Up to the top mark, back down through the gate either side, back up for one more time and then a dash to the finish and the podium. Everyone fighting for space, and there's going to be some real drama down at the pin. Crew's going to have to work hard to make sure that they don't catch that pin. And the fastest start has been off the middle, right close to the bow of the pin end. I'm really impressed that uh, Spain managed to come off there. Jordi Shamar and uh, Cabot from Spain managed to make uh, good work of that little bit of space that they had there at the pin. So powerful to come off the pin on, on a boat like this, where you can just push down a little bit. Build speed. And there's some big uh, discoloration on the water there, that mix of the current. That is a, a tide line. We're right on the change here. And I think that's what was making the start quite problematic. It's been interesting watching the transition into a mixed gender class. It's, it's got tougher. I, th I think you might agree, David, you know, it's like the best of the women's fleet and the best of the men's <laughs> yeah. fleet. It's got, it's got so hard and so tight at the top. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the toughest thing has been that no matter where you were before, no matter how many Olympics you may have under your belt, you now are starting with a new teammate. Some close crosses here and a little bit of ducks as well as Japan number eight, Okada and Yoshoka go underneath. That's our overall regatta's leaders. The boat leading at the top of the course is Spain, Shamar and Cabot. They needed to find some extra speed. They needed to start strong on this first lap to make sure that everybody knows, you know what, if you want to knock us off the podium, you're going to have to work hard. And they have done that. They are stretching away in first. Second rounding at the top, the Portuguese pair, Costa and Joao, world number 16, and then the pack closely behind here as everyone getting themselves down on that downwind. Working hard on that pumping. And this is where, you know, you, you've done that upwind, you've been pumping really hard as a crew, and you think maybe I'll get a little bit of a rest on the downwind. Not a bit of it. No, not a bit at all. In fact, uh, it, it just works a different uh, group of muscles, to be honest. And as with anything, it's all about technique. If you simply pump and flail, you will go slower on the waves. Right now, 
in terms of positions on that podium. Japan, Okada and Yoshoka, we know that they're going to be on the top spot. Shamar and Cabot from Spain have done enough so far to be able to hold on to second. And then taking that third spot is Winkel and Winkel. That is the one, two, three that we started with today. Now it's going to be about the timing for the drop. And the timing is good. Just as the spinnaker comes round, it's the jibe and then into the rounding and a nice tight turn to begin lap two in first place. Look at that on the tracker. Look at what Israel has managed to do. Hansen and Lazary from Israel, the world number 10 pair. If they finish where they are right now, they're going to be finishing in sixth in this world. And it's going to be all down to this one shift, this, this go and get them attitude in terms of the tide line. They spotted it, they got it, and they deserve everything it's going to give them. Well, the hard work has been done. It was one tactical play, but look at how well it's worked out for them. Hansen and Lazary from Israel round the top of the course and go onto that final downwind leg in an impressive first place. It's a Japanese pair in second, but not the one that you might be thinking about. Iso Zaki and Seki, Japan number 22, the 22 ranked boat in the world round in second. Now, what does this mean? for silver and bronze position. Spain coming round. Winkel and Winkel from Germany. Germany 13 really losing out in those final push there towards that bottom. And so we have got an incredible change in terms of what's happening on the podium now. We now have another boat on that third spot on the podium. We've got Japan in there, but we are very close going into that final run and everyone already spread out here. We could be seeing one boat get the right wave and close the distance down to the bottom. Halfway down this final run, one short reach into the finish. Just behind Hansen and Lazri. Isozaki, Seki from Japan. Looking set for that third spot. Behind them, Shamar and Cabot from Spain, holding on to second on the podium at the moment. Israel are out in front. They are looking good. They are looking absolutely confident out there. But realistically for them, we're not going to be focusing on them for the podium places. It's going to be about what's happening behind. It is going to be about the battle between Spain, Germany and Japan 22. Germany realistically need to get round the, the, the Spanish to get into that bronze place. Safely round the bottom of the course and onto that final reach, the short reach to the finish is Hansen and Lazary. But the big battle here is for those final podium places. Sweden coming in here and coming in for a nice rounding. Dolberg and Carlsen coming through, but here it's slow jibe and it's risky now for Japan. Isozaki and Seki, they've got the jibe, they've got the spinnaker set. And look at how high they are coming out here. They are coming really high here because they are defending against Shamar and Cabot Bahan. Ahead at the finish line, there is Hansen and Lazary coming through that finish line, winning that final race. But look at how Japan has managed to pull out a little bit of distance here on Spain. Second place in the medal race will go to Anton Dolberg and Lo Visa Carlsen from Sweden. There is Japan 22, Isozaki and Seki, and that should be enough to do some incredible moves on the scoreboard and go from sixth coming into this medal race and finishing off in third. Spain comes through the line. That means a second place in the overall. But here is the World Championship winning boat, the gold medalist pair, Okada and Yosh Oka from Japan. Now they can celebrate in style. 36 points to the advantage of the Japanese pair of uh, Isozaki and Seki. Shamar and Brogman Cabot from Spain in second. Really strong performance here from Japan. And this is how much it means to them. Okada and Yoshoka from Japan. World champions with the gold medal round their neck. <laughs> So much fun and uh, enjoy the medal race. <laughs> well, this is you know this is just part of your journey, yeah. and uh, you you qualify the country for the Olympics. Yeah. Big deal, good job. Yeah. And um, but you still have to qualify outside your team, right? Yes. And uh, not the Japanese team is a good sailing the, and uh, get the bronze medal. So we happy to with him 
and uh, we got the goal is uh, really fantastic and happy. Very, very happy. Uh, it was a nice comeback this week. Started a little slow, but happy to end it with a medal. Very, very happy. Joyful scenes from the hay. And how well did both the Japanese mixed dinghy crews sail? There's more action to come from the Alliance Sailing Worlds, including the 49er FX classes, the men and women's dinghy, plus this thrilling foiling class. Don't miss it.